This is episode 2 of Haste Hobbies Super Fantasy Brawl Painting Series. Today we'll be painting Mariu's uh, Life Stealing Werewolf. I use Rustoleum Chiffon Cream to prime this model. For the areas the spray paint couldn't reach, consider brushing on an ivory tone, so the following pellucid paints will have an even value supporting them. For the fur tone, I'm mixing a white and a beige. The white from the contrast range is one of the line's most unique paints and well worth it. This is applied to all the furry bits. And for some added visual interest, I'm putting a bit of beige on the tip of the tail and wet blending it with our mixture. To make the fur read as white, we're going to be dry brushing on a white all over. Note, dry brushing is best done on a non-moist surface. Moving on to one of the most significant parts of the model, the red cloak. Before applying contrast red, I'll be underpainting the cloak a little bit more to boost the shadows and highlights. I do this rather clumsily with a dark neutral gray. I should have feathered out the edges so that the difference between the shaded recess and the other parts of the cloak were not so stark. But I just did it the ham-fisted way, and this is what I got. Next is the most tedious part of the model, the black armor. Because all of the black armor is recessed beneath all of the bones that ornament the armor, it is impossible for me to paint the black armor without getting it all over the bones. This will necessitate a lot of cleanup afterwards so that we can paint the bones a bright color. But seeing no way around it, I just painted all black and I cleaned up the ivory white later on. Oh, and I added a little bit of dark blue to the black for added interest. I see a lot of painting YouTubers do that, right? They say, don't ever paint with just black. It's gotta have some other color in it. So I heeded their advice. Once the cloak's underpainting is dry, I head back over there with a large, flat brush and apply Blood Angel's Red all over it. Also, I cleaned my brush a little too vigorously in the paint water and splashed all over the cloak, making it look even worse. As promised, I went back over the bones with ivory to prep them for pellucid paint. Once that was dry, I let the name of the paint guide me and brushed those bones with Skeleton Horde. While that's all drying, I did the base with a dark yellow, a bright green, and a flat gray. Or Agar's Dunes orc flesh, and basilicanum gray, if you want to use the nerdy names. For the straps, I used bright brown, or snake bite leather. I came back and applied all those colors to all the places I had missed when I first got them out. What this shows is it really pays to plan how you're going to paint a mini before you start painting, otherwise you're going to be getting out those paints three or four times and wasting them on your palette. Next I use a huge brush with a fine tip and blacken the puppy nose. Then using some red thinned with contrast medium, I glaze on the drooping pinkish dog lower lip and dot the eyes. With gray, I add contrast to the teeth and eye sockets being particularly careful in the eye socket so as not to darken the pupil too much. Then I return to the teeth with some ivory to highlight them. With all the flat colors applied, I whip out the metallic gold for the bling chain around his neck, the sword, the top of the scabbard, and bits and pieces of his peck and knee pads. Now 
For the base rim, I use a non-proprietary mix of black ink and dark gray in two thickish coats. To redden the gold sword, I return to Pellucid Red. To black line the metallics, and any other division of color that needs more definition, I use an oil wash. I completely forgot to paint the beard blingy thing, and may never do it. And that concludes how I painted Mary Like, subscribe, ask questions. Come again next time.